Oh, hi. Uh, hello. Oh, hello. What are hey. you doing here? How strange. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, wow, man. Well, uh, let's read this. No. <laughs> we don't have 45 minutes of reading. Yeah. Let's read that one. Um, <laughs> we thank you oh, hi. for being here. Hello. Hi. Hello. Uh, hey, buddy. We could not imagine uh, doing this without you guys. Um, this has been this has been a long time coming. It's been a first of all, um, not only just for us, but just for this. We've had an opportunity to sit down and talk about this in different kind of mediums, whether it be for interviews or press conferences or, or like press tours. But to actually go through the game um, now seven years later and to be able to kind of step through everything. Whoa. Oh, you got an old, look at you, look at your beard. Look, look at your game dev beard. It's actually trimmed up. It's You've crazy, done a good that's thing. when it came out. That's not even counting the years that we, we all worked on it, not even to mention how long you worked on you it. You started, you did, how long were you in development? It was five and a half years? You started, started on early on, 2010, because we just finished Uncharted 2. Right. Uh, and then we were working on Uncharted 3 when you brought yeah. me to Naughty Dog. I was like, I want to show you this, this idea for this character. It'll never work. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, 2010 we started. Uh, just started with me and Bruce in the room, just putting note cards on the wall. And then the team slowly grew, and you guys came in. And now we have The Last of Us. <laughs> you, when you first started, like, everyone tries to distill it down to what is, what are we trying to make? Why, why this game? Why now? What, what was that for you? Like, what were you, what were you thinking? <laughs> what in the world were you thinking? Uh, there was just like a lot of things that were inspiring all at the same time. There was, I remember Bruce and I used to brainstorm while we were working on Uncharted 2. We would go to dinners, uh, we're crunching really late, and then go to dinners and just brainstorm other games. And we're talking about this idea of what if Nate was in this war-torn city and he was like with this girl that was mm. mute um, and you had to like, mm. she was wanted to show you the city and like she would like lead you along and traverse and would like brainstorm all these things. That later that turned into like the whole Tenzin sequence in Uncharted 2. No oh, kidding. I that's love that why he like, Oh, like so this wasn't in response to that, this became that. Yeah. Tenzin okay. was an ugly woman. <laughs> so <laughs> Tenzin was whole like inspiration was like from Eco. Like this all whole right. kind of like mm. two characters that don't speak the same language. So that was our interpretation of that. Oh, Pogo and Trumpet. Huh. Oh. Who are the Pogo and Trumpet, who are that? I mean, obviously, uh, Evan Wells' dog and Christoph Blesser's dogs that have now passed away, those two dogs. Famers. But they used to be the naughty dogs. Uh, wait, at the wait, time. wait, wait, wait. So have they, were they still alive when yeah, yeah, you yeah. were making this? Can I, can I interrupt? This is one of the coolest things that oh. you did that. <laughs> and Nolan North is David. That was that was the coolest credit I think I've ever gotten. Well, with you specifically, just the, just with, with David, was wanted to put you in the game and didn't want anyone to recognize you. And I remember, it was I remember. To be like a big secret. And in fact, there's an interview with Jeff Keighley, interviewing me and Bruce. And I think he said jokingly, "It's like, so who's Nolan North playing?" And Bruce flipped out at Jeff, like, <laughs> like we've been trying to keep it a secret the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Oh, he's oh, who?" That's Don't it. worry about it. I remember we did we talked about it. we and pe people. People like didn't know it was me. A lot of people didn't know. And then uh, when I saw that credit, you know, I remember that was the coolest. That, that, I, I still remember, see people surprised. Telling it's like I read Reset Era and like all these forums, and like every once in a while, someone be like, "Oh, by the way, Noel North plays David." And people are like, "What? Yeah. Are you really fucking kidding sound me?" Like you. It's just, but to, to get, you know, it's just, it's such a cool credit. And no, just you know, because it's that's just uh, so I. I I, I'm sure I, I better have said thank you a long time ago, but uh, I'm pretty thanks. sure. So, uh, in the next one, no. will there be another one? So, no, we're still trying to figure that out. Yeah. I think David actually, I gotta go. die. What am I doing here? No shit, yeah. you have a game to finish. <laughs> anyway, to quickly answer your, your question, is like the, the whole idea for this game, the very basic concept that we were intrigued by is like, can you make a game where two characters start and they don't even like each other? And by the end of this whole arc, this whole journey, they love each other the way a parent loves a child and a child loves a parent. This mm. is unconditional love. And can we make the player feel that through a sequence of chapters, in a way? Like all these chapters that you're playing as you're going on this cross-country journey. That was the main And I love how you did it with seasons. For making, yeah, for making the game. So cool. Four-act structure, I suppose. There's things that I've 
as we, I've gone through this and I've played this, this will be now my fourth time that I've played it through. There's different things that stand out to me every time. Um, and I'd never noticed literally the positioning that Ellie has, or Joel and Ellie have. The distance um, that even the AI takes in the very beginning, that there's, there's much more distance between Joel and Ellie. And that's represented even just in the way that the character follows you to, once the relationship gets closer, that, that Ellie's not closer to you. And then Ellie starts, I remember the first time that Ellie jumps down and Joel even says, well, hey, wait, wait up for me. Mm -hmm. um, the first time when you start to go meet the hunters. Where do those ideas come from? Because that is, is that just kind of born out of um, just just literally getting on the stick and going, well, what if we did this? Or is that, is there an idea that's percolating there that you're finding the way to execute it as you go along? So we have the high level thing of like, we want these two characters to come together. And then each chapter it's broken up by like a sub idea. So for example, mm -hmm. Pittsburgh, if I remember correctly, we're like, okay, this is where these two characters have to start trusting each other. Mm. So how do we do that? Well, we have to put, start by putting Ellie in a really precarious situation where Joel tries to be overprotective and he can't be. And then we flip it where Joel's in trouble and Ellie comes and saves him. Mm. And then they slowly realize they have to rely on one another. And that's all of Pittsburgh is like those kind of ideas. And we'll brainstorm way more ideas than we can put in the game. Uh, but those are the ones that win out. Whereas like the winter sequence, is where what if like Ellie becomes the protector over Joel mm. and like we flip those roles and now all the ideas have to come adhere to that kind of high level objective that we're after for that sequence. So each sequence has an objective that we're after in this much larger arc for these characters. Going back to the very beginning, you know, if, if I may tell this story, because I think it's a great story. I didn't know this until maybe you even knew this. What was your original title? Well, uh, this has taken up all sorts of forms. There was one, originally there was like a story that had some of the basic themes. It was called The Turning, when I was thought this would be a graphic novel. I mean your original title, like your- Well, the original title for the game was called Mankind. Okay. Yeah. But your actual function, like Neil Druckmann's title within this, was what like your? Oh, my title is like a, is my like mm -hmm. what, what? What was on your business card? What was when we started this at Naughty Dog? It was lead designer. Lead designer. Yeah. So, do you remember this? This is a fascinating you know story. Maybe. I... There's something that I, I, we've glossed over, but this is fascinating. So, lead designer, you've been with Naughty Dog at that point. How long? So 2010, uh, six years. Six years. Uh, in that time, you had worked on Uncharted, Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3. Yeah. Um, not Uncharted 3. Not Uncharted 3 because you had started this. Um, Gordon Hunt originally uh, was set to be the director because why not? You, you, he shepherded with Amy this entire franchise that um, was so tremendously successful. Oh, I see where the story is going. You know where I'm going with this. <laughs> and then we start getting into it. We shoot all the scenes. We shoot a lot of the scenes with. We shot Truck Ambush. We shot um, a lot of Bill's Town. And just the tone with Ellie Rifle was originally shot with Gordon. And then the the tone was just like, we need something different. We want to have it, it to have a different voice than what Uncharted did. So we start looking, or you guys start looking, it's like, let's start looking for, for different directors, Gordon being the absolute saint that he was, totally understood, um, and you start auditioning all these different directors, and then finally somebody, maybe it was Evan or Kristoff, was like, why don't you do this? Yeah, so. Uh, I want you to tell the story. Well, first of all, let me back up okay. and say, like, what an influence Gordon has been, because, like, being on the set, watching Gordon direct Uncharted, and working closely with him, it was like, a mentor in a lot of ways and mm. so much of how I direct actors I learned from Gordon Hunt um, and then yes we decided we wanted a different tone and started interviewing directors and I think I came to you guys to ask for some recommendations I gave some I remember that I gave some not so good ones <laughs> um, uh, yeah. and then but realized I don't know how to interview a director so I started like reading books on directing and I took an acting class all with the hopes of like, oh, I want to understand how to, what a director does so I can interview them so we can hire the right person to make this game. And then more doing that, just starting to get the idea. I was like, well, I'm really enjoying this. Why don't I do it? Like, can I talk directly? I'm not sure. 
and actually, and I remember like, I talked to Bruce Straley about it and Bruce was like, I think you should do it. Why, mm. why would we need, we don't need someone between you and the actors. You should just talk directly to the actors. I'm like, okay, well, I wanted someone's backing with a Naughty Dog. And then I was like, all right, well, I'm going to try to do this. I remember I was so nervous. I called you guys one at a time. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I signed on to work with Gordon Hunt. And instead, I'm going to be doing this. And you're both super supportive and said, like, we're, we're with you. And it gave me the confidence to do it. And, like, and I remember telling you, like, I know I'm going to mess up. I'm not going to do the right stuff. Please bear with me. And we'll get through this. Can I feel like... Go ahead. I don't know if I'm rewriting history, okay. uh, rewriting the narrative, but I feel like I, uh, there was a conversation where we had talked about where, where we knew that Gordon wasn't going to continue. I feel like we had talked about, both of us were like, well, why don't you, well, just, you just do it? Do it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've said it, I don't, I don't remember. It's like so I many feel years ago. Like, I feel like we did, because I, yeah. I feel like both of us were like, you're you can totally do this. Mm -hmm. There's two things that I love most about this story. One is, can, do you remember your first day as, as director? So, I feel like that's... You should remember this very well. Well, I remember what happened. I think we were shooting some of the Bill stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Earl came back, he was gracious, and he was like, yep, I don't totally understand, let's go. And we reshot a lot of the stuff and... and but <laughs> yeah, so the, the, I don't think I've ever said this story publicly, but... Really? Yeah, so my... Uh, my <laughs> daughter had fallen and had to go to the hospital the same day. And I'm on the phone with, like, with, with Maya and like we're talking about my daughter. So I was like, I had to wrap up and then I knew I'm going to meet them at the emergency room. And then I'm starting to get a headache and I'm starting to see double. So I drive, I drive the emergency room, daughter's fine, everything's cool. The next morning, I'm still seeing double. I drive myself to the emergency room, and it turns out I have to get surgery. I, ha I had an infection. I was going into my eye, and I almost lost vision in my left, <laughs> my left eye. I and I needed never. emergency surgery that day. So I was working through that pain. I never heard this story. I was working first through that pain day on the first job. First day, like I'm working through that pain and seeing double <laughs> and an directing. Omen. It's and an I'm omen. like, I gotta work through it. I gotta work through it. And this I'm day. like, Neil, I think I'd like another take. And he's like, I'm going to <laughs> lie. <laughs> You're killing me literally <laughs> the beauty of this though is that throughout that entire process what was your once you decided to take on those responsibilities of, of being the cinematics director and actually walking working through the scenes with the actors on the stage what was your title then well around that time uh, that was some at some a year into production I became creative director so mm -hmm. I started as a designer became creative director but when you first stepped foot on the stage, was your title creative director? Not yet. I don't think so. This is my favorite part of the story. Interesting. Yeah. Well, what, what part? So you were... Well, he's not saying something. You're, you're dying for him to say something. May I? Go ahead. Okay. As you have told this story to me, we just assumed you were just the director. And you assumed all these responsibilities with no title. And if I remember correctly, you came maybe a couple of months into this, you came to Evan and you were like, or Christoph, and you said, um, so do I get the title of creative director? And they said, no. They said, lead designer is enough. And they sent you about your way. And then you came back to them again another time, maybe six months later and said, um, I really feel like I deserve this title. And you said, why? And they said, well, I'm, I'm afraid that here I am, and I'm giving people all of this creative direction, and I'm not the creative director. It's like, oh, are people not listening to you? And you said, well, no. So this, I remember now. So there's a lot of important lessons that I got from Evan. And, important lesson for me, too. And, and Christoph, which was like, titles don't really matter. Mm. And, that, and the way that things work at Naughty Dog is like, you do a responsibility for a while, and people start organically working with you as if you have that title, and then you get that title. It's not the other way around. So you have to kind of prove, you have to earn it before you get it. Not, to, not, you don't need the title to get the respect and to do the job. You just do the job and then you get the title. So it was probably about a year, like you said, it's into like a production. a year into production of Last of Us. Hmm. You finally got the title. And you're like, by the way, you're creative director. Yeah. You're like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> get out of my office, I got work to do. What did you find like, most satisfying mm. about when you got the final product? It goes out there. People lose their minds. I mean, looking back, and I know you know we're months away from 
the highly anticipated sequel. What was most satisfying? It's such a roller coaster because the, before the game comes out, especially this one, like you go a month before we finished, it was so rough. So many of us on the team were like, I don't think this game's gonna be good. Hmm. Like it just, it just doesn't play well. We're like, st parts of the story don't quite come together and we're like, and it's like, it's more nuanced and stuff we've done in the past. I don't think it's gonna resonate as much like as Uncharted with people. And then to have it ship, and have people play it and finish it and argue about the ending and argue about the characters and get tattoos and it, has, it resonates with them. It's just, it's so surreal. It's like, it doesn't even register. Like to this day, like people come to me like say what the game has meant to them or like it helped them work through a difficult part of their life mm -hmm. and it's still hard to believe. Well, I, I've heard that with Uncharted as well. You know, and I think that what the, the beauty of what you guys created Naughty Dog and I mean, you were instrumental in the first two as well. Well, the Uncharted, it's, it's like people have tattoos, sick Parvis Magnet. Yeah. People have the Firefly tattoo. Yeah. Uh, like Alex Troy and I go all over the world now, and there are people who have Naughty Dog tattoos. Mm -hmm. There are people who are like, if I could just one day work at Naughty Dog. Mm -hmm. you know, and you, those are two franchises that are just tonally, just complete opposites. Right. And they are some of them, they're just, honestly, but their heart is the most similar, beloved right? thing. It's yeah. like they're very character driven and they're very about... They're story driven yeah. too. They're character driven. Uh, what I w always loved about it is the characters helped drive this, a, a brilliant story. And it wasn't like, well, we just, we got a good story, just stick some great characters. Plot. <laughs> great know? plot. We don't need a great plot. And when you have characters like, like Joel and Ellie, um, I'll tell you something that, in, in everything, like the, obviously the opening scene um, just shocked me, but Brandon Scott Oof. and his, his oh, little brother, Henry uh, and Sam. That, that hit me somewhere. I was like, whoa, because I just, because it just, like things like that. Like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, no, it's, no, no, no. And it's just, and he's gone, and you're like, you're, he's gone. And we were so far away from that huge, impactful moment of the prologue. It tore you at almost kind of, Forgotten a little bit, and especially that that beautiful moment of, of kind of having that campfire scene with, you know, talking about riding the Harleys with with Tommy, and, and everyone's kind of laughing, and Ellie gives the toy and reminds Sam that he's still a child, and he throws it down, and he throws it down, and they're having this existential conversation. It's like, what do you think happens to these people? Like, is there a person that's still inside of there? What happens to you when we die? Like, Sam is looking to. Ellie, of all people, for these answers, like, I, need, I know what's about to happen to me, and I need you to tell me, you're my last confession. I need you to tell me that's gonna be okay. And the beauty and, the, and the, the tragedy of that moment is that Ellie does, in, in her way, offer the truth, and it's not what Sam wants to hear. Right. Um, that Stuff like that becomes revelatory, not on your first playthrough, <laughs> not on your second or your third. I remember the moment when you and I, there's that little office that was attached to the outside of the stage and we would go in every morning, that's where we would do our table reads, even on Uncharted, on the now parking lot that was Culver Stages. And you and I sat down and, and Bruce and, and Neil gave us the same pitch that they had given to Sony and they were like, well, there it is. That's gonna be whatever this game's gonna be called, T1, because we didn't have a title for it. Um, you know why it's called T1? Is the next big thing? Is that what next it was? Next big thing. So there was thing. Thing. There was one because we were like, oh, maybe it'll be good. We'll make another. <laughs> <laughs> Which you told us later. You're like, I don't care. I was like, well, but what about this? I kept giving you this great advice the entire way. You kept telling me how you thought Joel should die. I did. <laughs> Repeatedly <laughs> saying, yeah. I think Joel should die at the end of this. No, oh, I wish he had. <laughs> and then Nate Drake comes up. I actually had an idea where I thought that Nate and Joel should meet. And, and fortunately, this man was like, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. But for you, He's just climbing. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years later. He's a clicker, though. Uh, yeah. Sully's over there. <laughs> clicker. <laughs> you, you and I, I remember, we, we, they, Neil and Bruce finished the pitch. And they showed the beautiful pitch deck and, and PowerPoint. And I'm like, well, that's it. And we're like, let's take a break. I'm like, yeah. And we walked outside. And I was still smoking. And I, I, I lit up a cigarette. And you and I both were just like overwhelmed. And I remember <laughs> looking to you and saying, do you realize that if this thing sucks, it's because, because of, of us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What you've now 
so much has so much life has happened for you. Um, do you remember like how you felt when you first? We talked a little bit about like, getting in the suit and how funny that was, but what were you thinking this thing was going to be? I I think what it ended up being for me is so much more than just what. What am I trying to say? So much more than a game being out there in the world. Mm. I think the experience and sort of the afterlife of what happened with the game, knowing you guys and just the experience of, of shooting it, and I've talked about this before, like that first game, that was a level of collaboration that I've never experienced. Yeah. That's the Naughty Dog thing. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. And it's, you know, as an actor, as an artist, as someone who's creating, you, those are the experiences that you yearn for and you don't get them often. And I think that was, that's, that was my huge takeaway. I mean, and, and, but now after the, obviously the game has been out for seven years and sort of the, conversations with people who have played the game and, and who um, talk about what the game means to them. And, and it's, yeah, I mean, I've said this before, it's so much more than just a game to me. It's, it's, it's been a life experience and a life lesson. Hmm. This I mean, that's what's cool, like working with you all is that, this will sound a little kiss-assy, but it's true, is it, uh, right? Ellie would, could someone else play Ellie? Maybe, but it'd be a very different Ellie. Sure. It wouldn't yeah. be this Ellie. Could yeah. someone else play Joel? It'd be a, such a different Joel. Same thing with David. It's like, yeah. you guys own those roles to such a degree and just bring so much of yourselves into it. It becomes, like you're saying, a collaboration. Yeah. And those are like the most fun things to work on. It's like other people surprising you with what they bring to the table. Yeah. Sometimes those moments can be moments of contention. Um, with you all the time. All the time. Yeah, but it was always <laughs> interesting that it, no matter who, what role anybody, who, whatever anybody's role, um, everybody had a voice. So, you know, I remember in everything we, we've ever done, you were like, what do you think? What do you think? And, and I, I could see in your eyes, you're like, I'm going to, you know. Like, I'm going to indulge. But, <laughs> I'm going to indulge. I'm going to let you do, but what do you think? And, you know, but that's just to be able to do that have the time, take the time, you've talked about that a lot, always take their time to do the scene, do it again, do it again, try it this way, and it could be something very subtle, but everybody's input, anybody in that cast, had the input to their character and to the scene, and their opinion mattered. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, that's a, rather than like, action, we got it, moving on. There's moments though where that you have, you, you do allow that freedom, you do foster a very collaborative partnership, and you do, I told you this for you on your birthday, I was like, thanks for always letting me give one, one more take, even when it was a really bad idea. Sometimes we're good ideas. Sometimes we're good ideas. Um, probably the most uh, asked about scene that I get is Sarah. Um, and playing through this for the first time, Nolan had never experienced that before. Knew about it, kind of, but there's a difference when you're on the stick. It's a difference when you're the one driving that, and, and it's an indelible thing. Even just watching it is a different thing than actually playing through it. That, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever asked what was going through your mind because to summate that experience, we shoot it, I've, I've talked about what I went through, and then we come back and we go through it again, and then there was the th it was the third take, the second time shooting, and you walked it to me and uttered the famous phrase now to me, which is I'm picking up on some resistance. <laughs> did, did, you, did you know? Did you know this? Yeah. Pam has a great shot because Pam. Good way to I, say I, that. I forgot, but Pam was on set that day, <laughs> and there's a great shot of of the the back of us, and Neil is here and I'm here, and I'm, I'm looking this way, and we're having this very intense conversation. And what, what you said to me, I remember this very vividly, is you said, right now what I have, um, I said, you're damn right you're picking up on some resistance because we already have this scene and you're wasting everybody's time, including myself, because you're gonna go back and you're gonna realize that it was take one and we had it. 
And he said, right now what I have is a man broken. I said, yeah, his daughter just died. And you told me what I don't have is what's happening, this is happening, I can fix it, it's not working, she's going, she's gone, I'm broken. And it was understanding there was a moment that was there and you picked up on something that I, I was not aware of at all and you did the same thing in Ranch House as well. It's, it's something that I really struggled with as an actor in this is that I never looked at her. I never looked at Sarah in Ranch House. I hadn't looked at you, which prompted you to shove me. As a director, when you're watching this scene that you have poured yourself into on this page and you've iterated upon with the team and you know what function it serves in a game, to get an actor on stage that just <laughs> isn't doing it, how do you meet that challenge and what are you thinking? Usually what I'm thinking is like, God damn it, get it. <laughs> no, usually I'm thinking, man, I suck. I like, if I, Reshooting a scene is one of the hardest calls for me to make. Why? Because it feels like I failed. Like my yeah. job is to kind of like help us as a group move towards something that like is gonna slot into this part of the game. Okay. And when I say we got it, I need you all to trust me that we got it. Mm. That's like part of like the kind of relationship that we mm -hmm. have, that you guys are have, having to trust that I'm watching it and I'm gonna make the right calls to make you all look good and like make the characters authentic and honest. Uh, so when I say we got it on such a hard scene, and I, I, in hindsight, I realized I was getting just uncomfortable with how many takes we were doing, that mm -hmm. I, 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 f I felt like we had all the pieces and we could edit it together, which is always a bad, once you like say that in your mind, it's like something is I can right. cut it together. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then when we were at the studio and we cut it together and like, it's impressive. It's like, there are all like so many great performances and it's like, it's, it's good. And it felt, I'm gonna sound, this is gonna sound conceited, but like it felt like it could be good for any, a lot of other games, mm -hmm. but not good enough for this game. Right. And I, like, I felt like we don't have the pieces to make it the way I'm kind of seeing it in my head. Um, so then it was like uh, having to make that call, was like, and that's after we, like, we've spent weeks editing what we had and like trying different versions and like, okay, just cutting it down, like editing, to, this is the best version. And it's like, and it's good. It was like, fuck, we gotta go back to the stage. How am I gonna tell them we're gonna go back to the stage? <laughs> that yeah. And I remember we're like, we're shooting something else and it's like, and I'm, and I'm like so nervous and I'm like trying to work up the courage to say like, we're gonna reshoot the scene. Cause I know how like, there was hard work and I know what you had to tap into to get to that place. Uh, and I think you're like on a smoking break or something. Yeah, we're like outside, I'm like, Hey, by the way, there's something I had to tell you. And he's like, what? I'm like, hey, remember that scene we shot? He's like, yeah. And he's like, he's all excited, like, yeah, it was awesome, right? And I'm like, yeah, it was really good, except that um, we have to go back and shoot it. They're like, ha, 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 funny. <laughs> and and I'm like, no. Oh, my God, everybody. This, yeah. this is like our I'm not, I'm not joking line. Uh, it's like, are you, are you kidding me? Are you serious? <laughs> huh. I mean, okay, if you want to do it, we'll do it. Instantly in opposition to you, yeah. Uh, so that was a hard one. So I, I guess to answer your question, how do you do it? I don't know, I, I guess you just try to, you have tools, right? So it's, we could talk about the scene, we could try to give like some action verbs of like how different ways you could play it. We could um, talk about, hey, I'm feeling some resistance. What is it about the scene that's not working? What is it about this process that's not working? Do we need to take a break? Do we need to mm -hmm. focus on something else? And what worked in that one, I remember it was the, it wasn't any of the high level stuff. Like I even remember like saying, cause I was trying to downplay it. I felt like it was bigger than it needed to be. It was really, be. really big. And I was just like, how do we make it small? And I didn't want to say that because I felt, and I remember like at one point I said to you, what if we don't think of it like your daughter, think of it like your friend. And you're like, hmm. that's weird. <laughs> it's like, okay, that didn't work. <clears throat> and it finally took up like, okay, how do you, how do you process this? Like, what if you just didn't understand what was happening? And I felt like that was the key to unlocking that scene. It was like, mm. oh, I can fix this. Like, let's get Joel in a place where he feels like he can fix this. And then slowly realizes he can't fix this. And we only get the grieving at the very, very end. And we could only actually really get into it. We cut right before. Right. And that felt like the better choice for that scene. Did you ever have a scene like that that you felt that you were? I remember we had some scenes on Uncharted 4 that were pretty tough like that. 
As far as like resistance, or <laughs> I'm picking up on some resistance. Getting old. <laughs> picking up on some resistance. Not resistance, <laughs> just like, just showing vulnerable parts of the characters that were just like. Well, like which ones? I, I mean, I know you're right. I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm, I'm picking up on some resistance. I'm picking up on some resistance. <laughs> you're picking up on, on, on a man getting older going. <laughs> Let's save it for what? the Uncharted 4 playthrough. Oh, hey. You have to there do you that. Go. Absolutely. Well, um, yeah, well, there were some. There were some some moments that we definitely touched on those things, but I think that's that's the great thing about I mean, Naughty, I feel like that's Naughty Dog. Something interesting. When Naughty you're Dog like... characters in general, right? I mean, there's vulnerability. They're real people, and I think that's why people can could relate to Nathan Drake, can relate to Joe, can relate to Ellie, uh, relate to Elena. Any any of the characters. I mean, this game is taxed me. Just watching it, playing it is just a whole nother level. My back hurts. I'm like, uh, <laughs> but you I like need my back like, Every time he, he would go underwater, didn't he? I'd go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you are immersed, and you feel like an actual level of. Uh, you feel scared. You feel not scared as much as just threat and hope, and and. The, the one thing that I notice about this game is like, you get through a level. In most games, like, whoo, here it's like. Boss battle, good, done. Perfect. What's next? Yep. I mean, and, and is it ever going to get better? I mean, when, it, like, for the characters, because you are so invested in them as you move forward. And, you know, it's, it's I, I, I'm completely sold. Like, I just, I <laughs> cannot wait. For, for the next one, <laughs> don't push the date again for me. For me now. I think we can. I, I am. I am so. I'm. I, I've already promised myself. I promised Troy, before Last of Us Two comes out, I'm going back through this myself. It may take me. It may, I probably should start so, now. Second playthrough is. Second no, playthrough is way. Yeah. Well, you know what everybody told me? They said, oh, "Yeah, turn out all the lights, do it." Yeah. And I'm like, "Hell no! It's gonna right. be in the morning." Yeah. With, with the bride, <laughs> you know, with the smell of cinnamon toast and the. Oven. I mean, it's amazing. It, it's it's absolutely amazing to 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 watch this. It's beautiful. It's it's uh, poetic. It is. Uh, it, it's one of the. Best experiences I've had watching a, a game, uh, and we've been we've been looking at a bunch of them in the last couple of years, uh, Troy and I. And this is <sighs> it's kind of understanding where games have come from um, to know why this game landed when it did, how it did, with the team that it had, um, who had grown up playing like this legacy of titles that we've been playing through. Um, because this, as much as Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, um, even Spider-Man, um, the original Atari, not, not the original. <laughs> That's a hell, it's there's, a terrible game, by the way. There's these watershed moments in gaming where universally, the, not only just the industry, but the world, uh, not to be glib by any means, but literally the world stood up and took notice of this. Uh, people who had never picked up a controller before looked at this game and said, this, this is something different. This is something special. This is something that was daring. And I believe uh, at the root of it is because uh, something you told me once, which is um, you said if your hands weren't trembling to press send on the email with the sides to the scenes we we're going to shoot, you knew that you didn't do your job. Um, this was done not with fear but with a lot of faith, but putting you to a place that you felt stretched. You're like, they're gonna hate it. <laughs> it's gonna suck. There's no way we can make the game that we're setting out to make. But when you do something, anything, whether it be a game, a film, a show, a book, a painting, a song, or just your life, when you operate from a place like that that says, I get one go around, and it's good enough for most people, but not for this. This one has to be great. Then you get something like this that almost a decade later continues to, to move people, to challenge people, inspire people, get tattoos, um, to realize that no matter what, you keep finding something to fight for. What's actually cool is we're now wrapping up the second game and there are so many new team members that came to Naughty Dog because of this game.
because so like, of mm. so there's like there's now team members are like I want like I was on a field I was going to do engineering and like work for like SpaceX or something and now <laughs> I'm here at Naughty Dog because of The Last of Us. I was working on the cure for cancer, and instead... <laughs> the only problem that I see that Naughty Dog has created with the Uncharted series and now Last of Us series is, <laughs> what are you going to do after this? <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's like, good luck. It's like, we are... I mean, it's... it's, uh, it's, it's these guys, yeah, the guys you, set the bar. I mean, I, I... What horizon do we shoot yeah, for next? Yeah, I mean, it's like... Do you, like... What, what are your, we talked about Ranch House, we talked about Saracene. Is, is there, I, I hate asking favorite questions, but is there a scene that you look back and go, that one, that one is? Um, I know this answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually. When you hack <laughs> David's face. <laughs> yeah. I remember getting those scenes for winter for all, for all the David stuff. And I remember, because I, I got that email when I was at a TGI Fridays. <laughs> Which is the saddest thing Which you could ever. Which is not a joke, but I just and remember I was sitting like there and I was David like, oh, shit. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love the ranch house scene. Um, uh, Which boy. I you remember that how I remember it. And I, I would love for you to correct my version if, if it is incorrect, but... Um, what I remember is that we worked on that scene a lot, and we had shot it very, we had, we had probably more takes than we had done in most scenes. And it was great, or it was good, but it wasn't great. Um, then when we took a break. I, 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 I said, can I, I take we five? we took like 15 no, or take 10, <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. And I went to my corner, and something that very similar in Ranch House, or in, in Sarah's scene, I, I wasn't looking at you. And I, I tell people this a lot, that the, the shove was not scripted. Um, and there's something I'd, I hadn't picked up on until even this playthrough. Joel tells Ellie, you have no idea what loss is. Um, and again, you always want to ground a character in something that's true to you. And that is not a statement that is true about you. You have experienced loss mm -hmm. um, far more than m most people ever should. And in that moment, I didn't realize that what Ellie was telling me, what Ashley was telling me, was her truth and that Joel was not receiving that truth and was not in a place to even look and receive mm. it. And is, is that what prompted that shove? Like, where did that come from for you? Boy, um, I think I, I've noticed that when I'm working, there are times where I like the... the, the I have a million thoughts right now, and so I'm trying to make this concise. Um, I, the only way that I really like my work is when I am 100% present. Mm. And I can tell sometimes when I'm on a track, like I'm just going through the motions in a scene and it's like just looping. Hmm. And I'm like, I need to do something to get off the track. So whether that's, throwing something, oftentimes it's violence, which is, <laughs> you know, I need to learn to use my words. Um, <laughs> um, I think sometimes it's like throwing something or, or shoving or um, uh, sometimes it's something else. Like I'll just say something that is not in the scene and then we'll just jump back into the dialogue. But mm, I think yeah. I need something to just like snap me out of it to, to, I need something new. Bring it back, back to the, the present. Something yeah, like to bring it back to the present and to, I think, the most important thing that I know that I need and for uh, when doing a scene with a partner is like, I have to, we both have to be listening to each other. And I can tell when I'm not fully listening or hearing them and, you know, a lot of times I'll just like grab somebody and then we'll just, just stare at each other for a minute and just be like, hold on. Let's just really connect here for a second. Um, uh, so maybe that's why it happened. I think it was just a, it, it just felt organic in that moment mm. to sort of have that frustration of, you know, and it also kind of made sense in the scene of, of Ellie telling Joel, like, you're not, you're not listening to me, you're not hearing me. 
Um, but I think that's, it's, it's kind of a selfish thing that I do, but it's, uh, you know, usually the next takes from there, I kind of, I do it f to, to snap out of it. Um, but sometimes there was a, there was a, an acting teacher that I once worked with who said that sometimes when you're doing scenes with someone and they do something that's not in the scene that's different, um, she would call them a gift. Hmm. And I've always thought that was so great because when someone does that with me, I'm like, whoa, oh, now I'm in the scene. What's going on? What are you doing? I'm watching everything that you're doing right now hmm. because I don't know what you're doing next. And I love working with people like that when I'm almost nervous about what they're going to be doing next. Because you're always on your toes. There's a quote by Richard Burton. Um, they said, Sir Richard, how do you do the acting so well? And he said, it's easy. I will give you everything. But if you give me nothing, I will take it from you. And that's yeah. because he understood that the scene needs to eat. And whomever is going to feed the beast mm -hmm. will feed the beast. But if, if no one's feeding it, if I'm feeding myself, if I'm feeding my own self-indulgence, if I'm feeding, trying to prove people that I'm a good actor, the scene will not eat and the scene will feel stale and the scene will feel false. Yes. Yeah. So I feel like I feel the that. shove is, is feeding the scene. That this is, I'm on a loop, I'm on a track. I don't feel it's selfish at all. I think it's actually very giving. It's a gift, like you said. Thanks. I mean, that one I just... But that was the one we let used. You, let you guys be. <laughs> like, I remember you like, needed oh, a break. <laughs> took a break and then came back and it just played out the way it did and that was it. I think, I think from that... Um, uh, from at least seven years ago, I think that's more of a common theme now for me, which maybe it was, I feel like that came up a lot in, in the second game. Every once in a while, there was something of just like, I think it's also frustration where I'll be like, it's not working. You know, something will, you know, it, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it throws things off, but I think um, sometimes you just have to try. And that's what's nice about being on the stage is that you get, you can. You can, you have the time, you have the, you can just keep going over and over. And I will not stop. I will keep doing a scene until someone tells me to stop. Mm. As you look down, you st I, mean, I remember the first time we stepped back on stage <clears throat> after the first time, um, since we'd shipped the game. First time for me, second time for you since Left Behind. You're in Left Behind. You're lying there. I'm lying the there. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderfully. Um, some of my finest work. Um, and I remember exactly where we were as Joel walks in, Ellie's in there, and, and the first words that Joel said, and I remember everyone's response, it was like, we're back. Do you feel the, because you have such a tremendously successful game, not just commercially, critically. Um, do you feel that weight? And how, how, do you, how do you balance that with just trying to do what you did the first time, which is I'm just trying to tell a very simple story. And when Annie was here, we talked about this. The tasks are simple. Go get the guns. <laughs> Go get the girl. Go to the radio tower. Just, it's just these simple things. You're telling such a simple story. How do you balance that with the weight of something? I mean, with the first one, there was also, it was the weight of Uncharted 2. We, Uncharted 2 became this massive success, mm -hmm. way beyond anything we thought it would be. And now we're like, okay. You're welcome. How do we, <laughs> how do we <laughs> sing the Thank energy. you, no. I brought I was it like, home. How do we? <laughs> And you just realize, okay, we're not gonna top that, so we're gonna do something different. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna do this other thing. And then, kind of similarly with the sequel, is like, first of all, do we wanna make it? And we're lucky that we have the freedom that Sony gives us where we can choose, right? Mm -hmm. we, we made Uncharted 4, and we haven't made another Uncharted since. Maybe one day we will, we'll see. Uh, We'll talk about it. <laughs> uh, so with the same... Game, By the way, what you just said, the internet just exploded. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Uh, and then with this game, like once we decided to make it, is like we very consciously said, we're not going to repeat the first game. Hmm. The first game exists. You could play the first game. This is going to be a different experience. And then likewise, is like 
you just can't worry about it. So try, you try to get into that same mentality. Because I remember working on, for me, working on the first game, it was like the first time I was a director. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this again. So I want to fail on my terms. So it's like, if they don't never let me do it again, I want to look at this game like, I made the game of my dreams and I'm done. That's fine. And then just try to do that again. And that was the mentality on Uncharted 4. And that was the mentality on Last of Us Part 2. And it was like, if this is the last game I make, then let me make the best game I can make. That to me seems to be a common thread and a common denominator amongst all great works of art. Is that if this is the last note that I sing, if this is the last stroke of the brush, if this is the last word that I write, let it be what I would hope would be the echo of my legacy. We, always, we joke around the office like, this is the downfall of Naughty Dog. <laughs> Throughout this entire game, we well, said, this is the downfall of Naughty Dog. This is going to bring us right down, here. but what a way to go. I sometimes feel like that is why maybe, well, for me, I won't speak as for actors or artists in general, but why sometimes something can feel unsatisfying to me when I'm done is because I didn't risk it all. Mm. And I feel like when you, mm. you know you put it all out there, you just blood on the floor and you just put it all out there and you're like, okay, I, literally I feel, have a, nothing left to give. I have nothing left to give, so now I'm slightly more satisfied than I would have been, you I'm, know? I, yeah, but I never get this. I, I always sit there very, going, it's very oh, weird. I could have done it yeah. a little, not necessarily better, but just different. Yeah. Oh, uh, maybe if I, what if I, mm. like if I had given Ellie a line differently, you would have responded differently and we'd have a whole nother scene. And it, it, you know, it's it's like that with every scene. So that's why I'm just like, that, that's where you just endless. it's, it's literally like uh, like we tell people who okay, so I want to be an actor. How do you audition? If you audition, it's like, and it was Gordon Hunt just bringing it back around to him in his How to Audition book. It's you walk out of that audition room or you walk out of a scene, you walk away from a project, and you Either. let it go, and you just it, now it's for you. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. it's for you. And and he used to say, you know. Uh, Plan something, go to a movie. Don't Plan to see it. a friend for lunch. Have something to look forward to after your audition so you forget about it, so you get back to your life. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, Uncharted, this, I mean, this is one of my favorite characters I've ever played. I love playing somebody that's just, you just, I justify him, I I, I don't think he's a bad guy, I, you know, whatever you want to do, but no, from him, you just, from you let it go. he's a good guy. 100%. Of course, they have to be, and you, but you let it go and it's so great that, you know, once we were all done, once you guys drop that, and you, you finished and you ship or whatever, at whatever point as artists you get to, now it's, now it's theirs. And to see that embraced, loved, so beloved, is that how, <laughs> how many years later? That, so this came out when exactly? 2012. So 13. Eight, 2013. 13. So it'll be eight years. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be seven years. And people are just, they're, people are, they're putting tents out. They're going to be like, I'm going to my tent. Well, I'm and uh, I think it's a foregone conclusion that when that day comes, um, we'll be right back here as well playing that. And I will be better. You will damn yes, well be better. We should play it for the first time. I'm down, dude. Yeah. Live stream it, fine. I'm, I'm like. Well, you won't be able to talk through it. <laughs> no. That may be impossible. No. It's hard trying to have a conversation. It is all super time. hard. It works I different found. parts of your brain. Oh, I'm terrible. The, <laughs> I just you are like getting better. Like, Nolan, your head's on fire. The I don't care. <laughs> Literally, your hair, not his. How do I crouch? Um, but, uh, of course, uh, we'll be playing it. We would love for you guys uh, to be here, a part of that as well. We'd love for you to be a part of it as well. Um, we can't imagine this. This would not be a definitive edition without you guys. Um, you're amazing partners. You're amazing collaborators. I can't thank you enough for, for giving me this opportunity to be in this. Uh, I wouldn't be sitting next to this man suffering through his horrific playthrough. You earned it. Thank you. You know what else we earned? An advanced copy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, thank you, uh, everybody, for, for joining, for sticking through this. Uh, we hope you've enjoyed this as much as we have. Um, this has been The Last of Us, the definitive playthrough. We ask you, what do we play next?